Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I'm going to share something with you and let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of that coffin. You try lifting the lid, but the enormous weight upon the lid prevents you from opening the lid. You then try banging on the lid. Hopefully to unsettle the dirt, maybe somebody might notice and start digging their way down towards you. This is what it's like to feel at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help, you know you can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn. In reality, there are people standing by your grave. You just don't know that. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, people don't think about de death when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, ever cross your mind while you're abusing drugs and alcohol that you might overdose and take something that was preciously given to you by the Lord Jesus called life? And if you don't care about that, what about taking that life away from the people that love and count on you most? Mother, father, brother, sister, husband, wife, children, even your grandchildren. With that, with that, let me leave one last thought. Don't be like the person I just spoke about that waited and waited and waited to get help until it was too late. Instead, pick up the phone and call me at 844-405-HELP and together you and I will help you take your life back. For your life is gone. How to stand firm in a runaway world. Are you buying one self book, uh, some one self help book after another without really becoming happy? Do you fall for the mindless one month and positive psychology to the next one? Are you constantly seeking self improvement through therapy or life coaching? If so, you are likely addicted to personal development and need uh, anti self help. The following seven step guide can help you stand firm and resist the self improvement craze of our times. Number one is to cut out the navel gazing. The more you gaze lovingly at your navel, the worse you will feel. Doctors call it health paradox. The more help patients receive, the more the self diagnosis, the worse they feel. Most self help gurus will urge you to base decisions on your gut feelings. Don't, it's not a good idea. Number two is focus on the negative in your life. We have been told to be positive for decades, but it doesn't help. It's often better to be uh, sourpuss than happy and clappy type. Now keep in mind this is not my uh, recommendation because I do believe that everyone should be positive, but they're saying to stand firm you have to concentrate on the negativity. And there are often plenty of good reasons for the grumpiness too. Everybody grows old, falls ill, and at the end they all die. If you spend time thinking about your uh, your uh, mortality every day, you'll appreciate life even more. Number three is put on your no hat saying, I don't want to do that, convey strength and integrity. Only robots always say yes. For example, if you're going, uh, if you're at a performance and development review and, and your line manager wants you to take a personal development course, just decline politely. Tell them you prefer to introduce a cake day at work instead. Number four, suppress your feelings. If you are always bubbly and positive, other people may suspect that your constant enthusiasm is a bit false. And uh, if you are incapable of putting a lid on your anger, they'll treat you uh, like an unruly child. Adults should choose dignity over authenticity. Again, I do believe in positivity over negativity. This particular segment is saying the opposite, but those aren't my views. Those are the views I'm just transferring from uh, from a article to your living room. Number five is sack your coach. And I, again, I don't believe in this either because you do need, if you have issues in life, life coaching, addiction, recovery. Co coaching and therapy have become uh, development tools uh, that people use as a crutch. Not so, I believe, but this is the article. A coach is supposed to help you find the answers within yourself and realize your full potential, but this is so wide of a mark. Consider sacking your coach and making friends with him or her instead. Perhaps buy the coach a ticket to the museum and ask uh, what lessons life has to offer if you direct uh, your gaze outward instead of inward. Number six is read a novel. Not a self-help book, but a novel. Self-help books always top the bestsellers list, but often reinforce the idea that life is something we control. Ultimately, they leave you uh, despondent at your failure to realize that you are uh, that their myriad promises of happiness, wealth, and health. Novels, on the other hand, enable to understand human life as complex 
and as unmanageable. Again, these are the views of the article that I'm just putting from this video into your living room, not my views at all. Number seven is dwell on the past. I always say don't dwell on the past. Look to the present and the future. This article is saying dwell on the past. If you think things are bad now, just remember that they can always get worse and probably will. The past, on the other hand, has a tendency to become lighter and brighter the, few, uh, the further it fades into the distance. When someone presents plans for innovation and visions for the future, tell them that everything was better in the good old days. Explain to them that the idea of constant progress is only a few hundred years old and, in fact, destructive. Practice repeating yourself. Look for role models who have put down some roots in their life. Insist on the right to stand still and uh, try to uh, read future posts, possibly even in this article. This article came from um, a, uh, a blog that I found uh, on Sober Nation. And you can also get more help uh, by looking into it. But again, keep in mind that not everything that I put on the show is things that I agree. Uh, I would compare myself pretty much to, uh, let's say, Fox News, uh, that they cover the news on both aisles, on both sides of the aisles, uh, both both different opinions, not like maybe, uh, let's say, CNN, which is only for one side. I bring whatever I read article-wise to your living room. You be the judge on how to either take that article to mind or adhere to it or disregard it. The views of this particular article are totally different than my own views, but it's still my job to bring them into your living room. So, again, keep in mind, whatever I just read off the teleprompter was written by someone else, and those are not my views. And I hope you have a great day, and may God bless you.